my sewing friends. Welcome to my sewing room. My name is Beth and if you're new, welcome. It's always nice to sew with friends and today I'm sharing a table runner sort of inspired by these pot holders that I made recently. I'll leave the link below on how to make these and today I'm making a table runner using sort of the same technique, just a little bit different. Let's get started. For my table runner today, I'm using a piece of batting 12 inches by 28 inches long, and I'm using a variety of one and a half inch wide strips. Some are from a honey bun pre-cut and some I just cut myself. And then I need a four inch square for the center. First thing I did was I found the center of my batting and I gave myself a line I just marked with a sharpie uh, sort of a dotted line down the very center of my table runner I took my four inch square and I placed it in the very center of my table runner using those lines and folding it in half. This is where I'll begin putting my strips for my chevron table runner. This is going to be a quilt as you go type of project. So I did get some backing. I cut it a little bit bigger than my batting and I pinned those two layers together. And now I'll start by adding my chevron strips. Uh, first I'll start here with the orange and I'm going to call this strip number one. strip number two and this is the one that I'll be wanting to line up with that um, line that I drew down the center. So after I sew strip number two on and I open it up I'm hoping that the corner of that strip there will line up with my line and I, I think it will. So that's where I kind of use it as my guide. So I'll just have strips one and two all the way down strip one I just you know put on and then strip number two that's the one that I want to make sure is aligned with my drawn black broken line there through the center And here I'm adding a strip number one and a strip number two on this side. It's sort of like a log cabin. And when I open strip number two, I want it to line up with that broken line.
I'll now add strips uh, the same way I've been doing and I'll kind of here I'm just focusing on that one side and I'll get this side filled up and then I'll go to the other side. Here I wanted to show you that you could stop adding strips when that um, last set of strips uh, meets the end and you could cut your table runner and have sort of a pointed end. I am not going to do that, but that would be a great option. I'll be filling those triangular corner edges there and then I, after I'm done, I will trim using the batting as my guide. I'll be using a one and a half inch wide strip of binding for my little table runner and I actually am going to add it to the front and roll it to the back and hand stitch. You could add it to the back and then top stitch on the front but um, right here I'm joining the binding so that I have a long enough piece of binding to go all the way around my table runner. I'll be adding this binding in the simplest way I know how, and that is just to fold that very beginning of the binding at an angle and just begin sewing right along the edge. I got to the corner, I stopped a quarter inch away, and I sewed off of the corner, sort of a stitch at an angle, then I put the binding I pull it straight up and then I fold it straight down and that's what gives me a nice finished edge on my binding. You can see that the end of the binding is just uh, right on top of that fold that I started with so that when I turn everything around, all the raw edges will be inside. So I'll be rolling the binding to the back, 
pinning all around and then hand stitching all the way around. This is a beautiful table runner that I will enjoy using outside this summer. It looks really pretty out on my patio. I enjoyed making it, and I'll, as always, I enjoy sewing with you. Thanks for joining me today, and I'll see you next time.